to you the basics of how to set up a effects rack for voiceover. This should help you in the basics. I'm not going to get in depth with a lot of things, but you should get a basic concept. Recording always starts before you actually turn on your recording, before you're ready to go. It starts with removing as much noise pollution as possible, turning off TVs, removing cell phones and other electronic devices from your booth, turning off any kind of LED based lights. LED lights do put off quite a bit of electrical signal that is picked up by microphones. So turning as much off as possible and eliminating those fans, turning off the AC for a few minutes, all of that makes a huge difference and reduces how much you have to clean up. The next thing is our microphone. All dolls have updates. All operating systems have updates. It doesn't matter if you're working on a Mac, a Windows, or a Linux. They all update from time to time. And when they do, occasionally you will find in your computer settings that your primary mic and audio settings have defaulted back to the original manufacturer. So keep in mind where your microphone is recording from. Even if you didn't do anything since the last time you recorded, your computer may have updated. So keep that in mind. The other thing with your microphone is know your microphone. Know what kind of microphone it is. Which direction does it record in? What recording pattern you have for that microphone? I have a CAD. Mine is very directional and sensitive. So I have to know that before I start recording. If you're not sure if your microphone is the default in that moment, simply take a finger or two, rub it over the microphone, and listen. If you can hear it with an arm track, then that's the microphone. If not, you need to find out where your microphone settings are and just adjust them back. The next thing we're going to go over is gain. Gain is how loud you are recording at. When you're recording, the gain setting matters, especially if you're putting compressors on. And compressors are highly recommended. They give you a fuller sound and they remove a lot of your um, boxy and undertones and just make you sound like you have a nice rich voice. To do this, you should be recording between negative 30 and 40 with your top peaks hitting about a negative 24, 25. What that does is it gives your compressor room to expand your sound and raise it up and make you sound amazing. So keep that in mind. Now, not all microphones are the same. If your microphone has a built in compressor, your gain setting should be about a negative 20. In the negative 25 to um, negative 10 range, you should be recording a little higher if you have a built in compressor or if you are using a lot of hardware. Um, there are certain interfaces that have built-in compressors. So 
know your system before you start recording. The next and last thing before recording is your mic technique. This is extremely crucial. Most microphones want you to do that little hang 10 about 10 inches from your mic. Again, I have a different style microphone. I need to be close to it. The closer you are, the more mouth noises you pick up. But the closer you are to certain microphones, the worse you will sound. You should also never be recording directly into the microphone. You want to be cheek to cheek with your microphone. This way, the air coming out of your mouth when you speak goes past the microphone. It can still pick it up, but it's going past it and not giving you plosives. So mic technique does play a critical role. If you're recording too far away from your microphone, if I were to back up, you wouldn't be able to hear me at all. And it would be harder for you to find the right plugins and adjustments to make you have that full sound, to make sure you're sounding the best you can. Now, every audio engineer is going to give you different tips, tricks, and techniques. These are mine. They will also use different effects order. And this is one thing that is very crucial is to have an effects order. How you put your effects and your plugins on your track makes a huge difference. And then, like I said, every audio engineer will have their own way of doing it. This is mine, and this is the way I have been doing it for quite a few people and works the best. First thing you're going to do is you're going to clean your track up. Get all that yucky noise off. Next, we're going to put on a compressor to give you body. Fill out that sound and expand it and make you louder. Some dolls, specifically Audacity and Adobe Audition, have leveler and normalizing plugins that you can put onto a track and onto your effects rack. In those cases, you would use it there. Many of the dolls, such as Reaper, Logic, um, Pro Tools, Studio One, um, Ableton, there's a, quite a few out there. You're going to do that at the end because you can't put it on your track so know your doll know what you're doing before you start wondering about the levelers i put the coloring as a number four coloring really makes you sparkle and shine it's like putting on the glitter and the glitz on top of the project it's going over the top um, some audio engineers like to put their colors on before they compress. The reason I put it on after I get the waves as big and full as possible is so that when you have it, it's, you can hear so much more detail. And it's easier for you to really enhance your vocals for voiceover. Specifically, audiobooks is really good for doing that. One of the last things I put on, and I always recommend putting a limiter on, your limiter will make sure you're not recording too high. Negative 3 dB is ACX standard. Limiter, make sure you do not go above that. Um, and then your master. Now, there is some confusion on the masters. What is mastering and what is a master? 
I'll go over that a little later, just to clarify. Now, as for cleaning, the very first thing I put on is a high low pass EQ. Your high low pass EQ will be on one side in between a 60 and 100 hertz, and on the other, you'll be I go as low as 17,000 hertz, but normally it's about 18,000 because a human ear doesn't process that anything above that for most people. I won't say everybody I hear above that. Um, but yes, definitely do that. What it'll do is the high low pass will take out your fans your electrical um and some rumbly sounds not all of them but some i would always start with a high low pass next put on your noise reduction um adobe audition and audacity have different built-in noise reduction features Reaper has enough plugins that you can have for free to really clean up your audio. Noise reduction means that you're reducing the fans, the buzzing, and all of that good stuff. Cars going by, planes, trains, all of that. I would go to Clarity VX the blue one the original one not the reverb which is a tan color but the original clarity vx don't buy the pro unless you are an audio engineer just get the simple one with the little knob that turns up i have put clarity vx onto tracks at a hundred percent and never once has it distorted any voice i've done that with not one not the low basses not the high sopranos it's always been very good at what it does and that's to remove the background noises you don't want if you live in a busy city like i do you definitely want that now your d hums there are plugins from waves m audio all the way through to your isotopes that have de-humming plugins that I will tell you will distort your voice and make you sound like you're boxy, underwater, in a fish tank. They're not worth putting on. If they're not distorting you, they are definitely going to be a lot of your issues. Avoid those. If you have fan noise or you have high frequency noise from electrical and you just can't get it out of your space, the high low pass is your best friend. You may have to put two on to just give it that extra, but yes, that will definitely help you. The next cleaning effects that you want to start building mouth de-click, de-clicks, de-crackles, um, de -essers. Um, I avoid plosive uh, just because it does alter your voice frequency. If you put it on and actually listen in real time, it does change your voice. So I do not use that. I will not recommend using a voice um, altering software because we want to hear you and your beauty. And some people say, I don't sound good. It's probably because you're using something that's taking it out. If you're going to use a de-esser, be careful. And if you have the 
opportunity, use an auto or an AI assisted um, DSer. They do help. Most of the DSing I do, I like doing with EQs. I learned how to use an EQ, so I recommend everybody does. Now your D reverb. I recommend taking care of this before you start recording. Hang up some clothing, some soft clothing. Denim works great. Anything that is cotton based, wool based, uh, linen based, natural fibers, hang them up around you. Make a little bit of space, hang them up. They give your room texture. And that will cut down the reverb. Um, there are a few cases that I have encountered where we've had to use a D reverb. I don't recommend them, but they are your friend if you absolutely have to do it. Now for compression. Compression is in some ways terrifying in other ways it's quite simple so i'm going to break it down if you have a glass and you marked where you put your water you put it in the freezer when you come back that water level has dropped and your water is now solid and made into ice so it's compacted but at the same time, it weighs more. That's the same as compression. You're taking something that's airy and open and you're pushing it down to make it loud and dense. This is what makes you sound really full and really beefs you up. I'm going to give you some standard settings that will make your life so much easier your ratio most compressors not all but most you want a four to one ratio adobe audition in your single multi-band i believe it is a eight to one ratio i just looked at that this morning so i believe it's eight to one um and that's perfectly fine use the ratio that's recommended for voiceover and if you have to hand do it, it's most likely going to be four to one. Your threshold. This is the scary part. Your threshold shows you how to bring down and compress. So that's what's pushing down the volume and making it dense. If you're using a compressor in your microphone, you want to go up in the 28 range. This is by ear. In Reaper, we actually have a compressor called Rea Comp. You can actually see what you're doing. It has a leveler. Um, that is an amazing feature. If not, you want to listen and bring it down until you feel full you sound really good and your voice has expanded out you most condenser microphones i am finding people are normally in the 30 40 ish range but those with compressors built in tend to be in the 20s and sometimes in the teens it's just a little trial and error to find what works for you the third thing you should be looking for on your compressor is auto makeup and auto release. Not all of them have these two, but if they do, you want to check those. Now in Rhea Comp for Reaper, they have a weird knee. Make sure that's never checked because that will make your voice wobble and you really don't want that. Um, the other things on your compressor attack release knee size 
and any other feature for that specific compressor are for music production, not voiceover. Leave them at the default settings and just move on. All you want your ratio, your threshold, and your auto makeup and release set. Once you do that, your sound is going to be vibrant. The next thing we tackle is for Adobe Audition and Audacity, go ahead and put your limiter and normalizing on. So go ahead and put those on your effects because you're going to need them at some point. In Reaper, we do this later. In a lot of the other ones, you will do it later. But if you have the ability to put those on, put them on now. Because the more stable you get your waveform, the easier it is going to be to start coloring. It's like adding nice dark lines so you know where to color. Now to color, there's a lot in the coloring range. EQs are the most common. Exciters, sculptors, saturators, expanders. I'm going to tell you now, for standard voiceover, stop at EQs. Exciters, with a half a click, you can end up going sibilant very quickly. Sculptors will start messing with your waveform and you can start having too many wobbles in there. So you sound like you're going and you don't want that. Same with sculptors and exciters. So, or expanders. So just be careful. If you don't know what it does, don't mess with it. The EQs, I'm going to have a video on EQing because, man, EQs are amazing and they are brilliant. Most EQs, especially the built-in ones to the dolls, will have a preset where you can go down and find one that works for either podcasting or voiceover. Set those up. Trust me, they're amazing. Set them up. Um, Reaper has five for voiceover. So you cannot have enough of these. Go in, put a preset that sounds good to you, and keep going. Audition has presets for voiceover. Um, they have one for rap. I've never played with the rap one. Um, and Audacity has um, EQ presets for voiceover. So go in, play, make it sound good, and then keep going. You can put multiple EQs onto your chain. I recommended a high low pass EQ at the beginning for cleaning, but now you, I'm saying to put a second one for making you sound beautiful. I have two of them. I use two different ones for just touching up my voice and making it sound good. I also use a mud free, D mud, or whatever your doll wants to call it, in order to clean up when you get congested. Everyone gets a little sinus congestion. The best thing you can do is put a D mud, mud free, or whatever mud filter is in your EQ. It will take that out and make you sound the same as yesterday before you were sick. Definitely, definitely play with that one. The next thing we're going to look at are limiters. Limiters come in two types. You have a hard limiter or brick ceiling, and then you have the smoothing limiters. The hard limiter is like a knife. 
it's going to cut a nice flat line right here on this ice cream. So if you have an ice cream cone and that is your soundtrack, your limiter is going to cut a solid line on that level. Um, most of us set it about the negative three or three point something dB. You don't want that hard slice. You want it round and smooth and looking pretty. Because people with sensitive ears like I have, I hear it. What a lot of people don't realize is with your limiters, having that smooth sound also removes a click. This hard cut creates a clicking in your audio. Again, this is one of the reasons I say to record a little lower, let your compressor bring you up, because you can remove those hard clicks that you can't see in your waveform or spectrogram just by using a smoother limiter. The only one I have used is RX10's uh, D Clip, C L I P, the D Clip. It has such an amazing smoothing feature. So I do recommend it if you can get it. If you don't, hard limit it all you want because you need to do that. You can't go above negative 3 dB. Formatting won't allow it. The next thing is your mastering. Mastering is not formatting. Formatting is reaching your RMS. It is reaching your um, 3 dB peaks. It's reaching your negative 3 dB ceiling. It is all of the stuff we talked about before. Mastering for audio, at least in the musical aspect, is a complex series of calculus formulas that I don't know because I don't know calculus. I'm good. I'm not that good. But they use high tech mathematical um, formulas to master musical tracks. Formatting is a little different. It's just making the file conform to the right specs for whatever your application is. Podcasting, um, audiobooks, commercials, whatever it is. What you want to do is understand mastering is complicated. There are now AI assisted mastering programs. Isotope has three. They have Neutron, Nectar, and Ozone. I love all three of them. I've used all three. Um, ozone is a little more complex to use and I wouldn't recommend it if you have access to the other ones. Uh, Neutron is my favorite absolute favorite and I will recommend it. I am not sponsored, but whew, love it. It has a lot of features that you can customize for voiceover, for podcasts. Now, when you're sitting here looking at mastering, it does a lot. It does the audio engineering and audio engineers know mastering. They're the ones that should be playing with those kind of settings because they have to lift, balance, and make sure it's an appealing tone. Voiceovers don't really use that. They don't. You don't really need it. And in some cases, mastering, putting a master um, plug-in on can actually diminish your sound quality. So keep that in mind. Um, plugins that I recommend. I always recommend the Isotope Music Production subscription. I find that 
at the time of this video at any point, it's $19 USD per month, but you get all of their top plugins for voiceover. You'll get the RX-10, the Neutron, the Nectar, the Ozone, um, and quite a few others. There's a six pack of plugins. And in future videos, I'm going to show you what I use the other ones for, especially when it comes to character voices. I love character voices and it does quite a bit. So I do recommend Isotope's music production suite, but if you're not a subscription person and you still want to get the best benefits, I would say Isotope RX 10 for purchase, or if you have an older version, they work perfectly fine. You just can't purchase the old version today. Um, Isotope Neutron, out of the mastering programs, I would use Neutron. The issue with putting these onto tracks is that if you have character voices, you have to split each character voice into its own track in order to put on a mastering effect. If you don't, it will level out your voice and you will lose your high pitches and your low pitches for those characters. A lot of people have that issue. Um, so I don't always recommend putting the masters on unless you're splitting character voices. Waves Clarity VX. If you only have a little budget, I always recommend getting Waves Clarity VX. That price fluctuates. Get on their mailing list. And when you can get it for the $30, $40 range, grab it up. It will get that little car that just zoomed by that you missed while you were recording. It will clear out Mr. Woofers that walked down the sidewalk and decided to yell at the mailman. I highly, highly recommend that. It will grab those airplanes and helicopters that go zooming by and you just don't hear it, but your microphone does. So Clarity VX, absolutely recommend that. And it was actually the very first plugin I purchased. So that's how much I've loved it. Ones to avoid. Before... December of 2023 when Waves released Clarity VX. They industry standard for voiceover was Waves NS1 to remove a lot of hums, hisses, and low rumbles. You can get rid of that with the EQs and with a Waves Clarity. I would not recommend um, NS1. It distorts your voice. It changes your pitch, your tone, and really hurts your overall quality. The next ones I don't recommend are anything in the deep breathing. When you're recording, your breath records in the what's called a mid frequency range. The D breath removes multiple frequencies in that range. So it alters your voice. I don't recommend it. Um, the next one I briefly went over is the D humming plugins. Now D breath and D hum are not specific to one manufacturer of plugins. They come in many names, many forms. Yes, Isotope has one. Our uh, Waves has multiple, but so does M Audio, Blue Cat, um, Reaper. There's quite a few in Reaper. Um, 
So just watch what you're getting because these things will distort your voice. And when you start distorting your voice, that's when you don't like it, when it doesn't sound like you. And you feel, ugh. You want to avoid that? Avoid these type of plugins that alter your voice frequency. Okay? Those are my recommendations. And that is your basics to setting up an effects rack. And again, every audio engineer has their own formula for doing all of this. And if you don't have certain plugins like Isotope, you can do it with a lot of built-in to your DAW. Just know what your DAW is offering. There are many ways to do this, not specific to one um, plugin manufacturer or creator or software. So learn what you have. And I will go into depth with a lot of these in future videos. So for today, thank you for joining me and sticking to the end. And I will see you the next time. Have fun recording and play with your recordings. Play with your audio. It's a lot of fun.